Hey guys, it's Bub here. Windows 11 comes out tomorrow on October 5th. Some people, even today, may not know if they're going to upgrade to Windows 11 as soon as it comes out. I'm making this video sort of as a guide to help people think if they actually need to upgrade to Windows 11. We'll be taking a tour of the operating system and really showing users what they're getting tomorrow on October 5th and allowing them to determine if they actually need it or if they want it. So. Let's get started. Obviously, the first thing with Windows 11 is compatibility. As I'm sure you've heard by now, there are so many new requirements with Windows 11 that it's really crazy. So let's just go over the minimum requirements just for now. You need at least four gigabytes of RAM and a supported processor. I know this is ridiculous. There's only a certain number of processors that are officially supported by Microsoft, but to sum it up, 3rd gen Ryzen or newer, or 8th gen Intel or newer. However, this processor does have to have TPM 2.0 enabled, which we'll talk about that more in a minute. Those are the major system requirements. It doesn't require an SSD, you can install it on a hard drive as well. However, those are the major ones. Back on the topic of TPM, TPM is basically like a security measure for your system. To check it, we have to just do Windows R and TPM.msc. And again here we can see we have TPM2. If you have TPM 1.2, it's not officially supported, but you may be able to use it. If you have a supported processor but TPM isn't enabled, chances are you can go in your BIOS and enable it. There's different instructions for every motherboard vendor, so you're going to have to check their website. But besides that, you just simply have to enable it if you have a supported processor. So what happens if you don't have a supported computer? Well, you can modify the ISO to go ahead and say, hey, Let's pretend we're installing Windows 10, but actually install Windows 11. That is a way that you can run in-place upgrades, or you can again do the same thing and use it to do a clean install of Windows 11. However, Microsoft has said that they are not guaranteeing any updates for these unsupported machines. However, on machines that are unsupported, I've noticed that Windows 11 actually runs fairly decent on them, which makes me question why they're not even supported. But first, let's get into the operating system itself. The most obvious change here is the start menu, and the start menu is extremely controversial here. We can see at the top we have a search bar, which brings us straight into search. We have two sections in our start menu. We have pinned and recommended. So the pinned apps are basically all of your apps that you can pin. Think of these as your kind of live tiles where you could cut, where you could customize them and say these are the apps I want on my live tile section. This is what this is, except there's obviously no live tiles. Your pinned apps can be as many pages as you want, you can have as many as you would like, and you can also move around these icons and customize them however you would like. Right clicking, you can unpin, pin the taskbar, uninstall, and do all of those things that you could in Windows 10. Clicking on all apps, this is picture this as the left side of your start menu in Windows 10. It has all of the apps by alphabetical order, and honestly, it is very interesting, and I like it a lot. And of course, down here we have our account settings and our power button. Nothing really special down there. I have noticed that at least on the pro versions of Windows, this comes with a lot less bloatware than Windows 10 did. Windows 10 came with all that Candy Crush and all that stuff. This only comes with links. As we can see, Clip, Champ, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. If you look at our apps, those aren't there. Those are only links. So if we want to go ahead and open Instagram, we have to download it. It's just a link there. So we just have to click uninstall and they're gone. They're really useless, I think. It's just a bunch of bloatware trying to get you to install random things from the App Store. But Microsoft did what they had to do there. I don't know why they did. Moving into search, we can see that this looks almost identical to Windows 10 search, except with rounded corners. So we're not really going to talk about that. Here is our task view, or I have no clue what it's actually called now. We can see our desktops and things did move to the bottom of the screen instead of having them at the top. And our timeline here has gone away. Widgets are back, however, they're not like they are in Windows 7 or Windows Vista. I would have preferred the 7 or Vista style widgets where you could put them on your desktop. However, this is just a widgets pane like the one found on macOS. Microsoft Teams does come pre-installed on the operating system and it is embedded into your taskbar. This is something you can easily get rid of in taskbar settings, just disabling chat. Taking a look at what is now known as the taskbar corner, we can notice some immediate changes. The action center has been split up into two different places. Clicking on the time shows us our calendar with no agenda. So they remove the agenda portion and they remove the full time with seconds, which I think is a little bit annoying. And then we have our notifications above that. 
This kind of reminds me of Chrome OS, but it is better than taking up the entire right side of the display. Our controls, however, have been moved here, where we can click on it and it brings up a extremely Chrome OS-like display. From here, this is where our Bluetooth and our Wi-Fi, if we weren't wired, would be. This is where we control volume, and we can even add things like casting, nearby sharing, and projecting. If you also had a brightness control, that would be here too. And to change the output, we just have to click on this arrow and then change our output there. For first off, immediate UI impressions, I like it. I've, of course, I'm biased a little bit. I've been using it since it came out in July. However, I really like the UI of Windows 11. Now, let's talk about some of the things that I really don't like about Windows 11, or things that take a little bit of getting used to. Number one, where the, st the location of the start menu. I know that you can go in and you can put the taskbar on the left side of the display, which looked good for a little bit, but the start menu just doesn't look right on the left side. But what I'm getting at here is when your muscle memory has been trained to go to the left corner of the display for basically the entire time you've ever used a computer, and you now have to move it down to the middle, that's a little weird. And the bad thing about having the start menu in the middle is it changes location depending on how many apps you have open. So you can see I open notepad here, the start menu moved over one. So if you train your muscle memory to go straight there to open the start menu, the next time you have another app open and you go down, you're going to open search on accident. Or if we want to have settings open, you'll open the task view on accident. It slides over one, which I really like the animation, but it's just a thing of muscle memory. Number two is the way that you have to delete files. Now this, I have gotten used to this, so I'm not as mad about it now. However, when you right click on a file, you can see that a lot of things have changed. We can see that we have our quick toggles at the top as well as the entire interface of the context menu has been changed to be transparent with these new icons. However, one thing you may notice right out of the bat is if we could do this, the delete button is really not there and they've actually moved it to our quick toggles up here. So when you're used to going down just right clicking and clicking delete, nope, you have to relearn it and go up to that delete button right there which is kind of confusing to some people, but you'll get used to it. There are two UI overhauls in apps. Number one is the settings app, which in my opinion looks so much better than Windows 10's. Windows 10's was that really weird, it had a whole bunch of just buttons on the front screen and nothing else, and it was really not user friendly. This tells you exactly where you need to be, Bluetooth, network, personalization, and it gives you a whole bunch of options in that said category. And obviously, it's not perfect. There are still some things that are a little messed up. However, obviously, it is way better than Windows 10. For some reason, on this Insider ISO, the new App Store does not come pre-installed. It has to update manually. So for this instance, I'm just going to use my main machine. We can see here that this looks so much different from the original. It's basically just a reskin. And the whole reason why they did this is A, to fit the theme of Windows 11. Android app support was probably the biggest feature in Windows 11 when they announced it. However, it's not here for launch day. That ex that's expected to come later next year in 2022, which is kind of a bummer because Android app support was the, one of the biggest deals of Windows 11. If we ever see Android app support, that'll be a huge thing. But for now, we have to stick to Bluestacks. Speaking of the Microsoft Store, Microsoft has included so many more apps in it. It's not just restricted to UWP apps, there's also regular Win32 apps, like Discord has been added to the store right here. So having the variety of apps in the Microsoft Store is amazing, however there are some apps that still exist that really shouldn't, and one of those is Control Panel. Control Panel does have updated icons, which means it's probably here to stay, but we can see that the theme doesn't match Windows 11's at all and this is even still here from Windows 7. There are a ton of UI inconsistencies throughout the operating system. Day-to-day -day use, you really don't see them as much, and so I think that Windows 11 is worth it. Through this mini tour of the operating system, this really begs the question, is Windows 11 worth it? In my opinion, if you have a supported computer, I would 100% go for it. It, we really don't have anything to lose as long as you have a backup, and if you don't like it, I believe you have 10 days to roll back to Windows 10. So, when it comes out tomorrow, you might have a little bit of a hard time downloading it, because we have really no clue how Microsoft's going to roll this out.
but it'll be interesting to see and find out. And so with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos and device restorations. And with that being said, I will see you all in the next one.